Dr. Kevin Connors, and we are going to go over our ketogenic type diet. So if you have a genetic predisposition of your cancer feeding off of the endpoint of glycolysis, and I won't get into the details of that here, we talk about that in our genetic slides, but if through the your genetic um, workup, I have said that more than likely due to different gene defects that you have, that your cancer is being fed down through glycolysis, basically through glucose intake, down through glycolysis and being fed off of lactic acid, then we're going to go on a ketogenic-like diet. So again, most people are on a mixed diet to begin with. When we get their genetics back, we look at that, and based upon that, I'm going to say, I need you on a low-protein diet, we're going to stay on a mixed diet, or we're going to go on a ketogenic-like diet. There's really three main diets for cancer patients. A low-protein, low-glutamine, low-methionine diet. That's on another video. The mixed diet, which is going to stay on a whole food diet, which is what I usually put most people on. Or number three is this one right here, a ketogenic type diet. A ketogenic type diet is based on trying to get your body to feed off of ketones instead of glucose. Well, we don't need to get in a complete ketogenic state to really see us cut off the fuel source for cancer. So that's why we call it a keto-like diet, a ketogenic-like diet. We're not going to be measuring ketone bodies in your blood. We're not going to have you get a ketone meter. We're not going to measure ketones in your urine. We're looking at getting you towards a ketogenic state. So that's what this is about. So let me explain how we go on a ketogenic type diet, what's good and what's bad. First, it's important to understand a ketogenic food pyramid. Now there's a bunch of information on the internet on ketogenic diets. I'm not going to try to reproduce all that. You can Google that. But basically, this is your new food pyramid. On the bottom is what you eat the most of. On the top is what you eat the least of. So on a ketogenic diet, you're eating a lot of healthy fats, coconut oil, butter, avocados, olive oil, different herbs and spices, a lot of green vegetables, lots and lots of green vegetables, and meat and eggs and fish and fatty nuts. And then as you move up, you're starting to eat some other vegetables too. You you don't see a lot of root vegetables in there, do you? So you're not eating a lot of root vegetables. They're more high in sugar. Yes, you got a, a true ketogenic diet, you can even eat some dairy, but that is dependent partly on your diet that I'm going to tell you also, because dairy can be a mucus former. It is a mucus former in a lot of people, and we don't want to be using a lot of that. Now, butter may qualify as something that you can eat, and this is going to be individual, patient by patient. I'm giving you the basics here. But as far as drinking milk and eating ice cream and stuff, those are out. Those are all sugar things. So we don't want that. But you're getting an idea of a ketogenic food pyramid. As far as what you can drink, you're drinking water. You're drinking tea. You can make iced tea. You can put lemon in your iced tea. You're drinking some coffee. And yes, you can even make a um, the type of coffee where you put coconut oil in it, and blend it up, and that's called bulletproof coffee. You're not drinking alcohol. Alcohol is like liquid sugar. It's completely non-beneficial to you. There's no benefits to that. So if coffee doesn't bother your stomach, if it's not bothering you, that could actually be good for you. But also we look at the genes on that, don't we? So if you have that Defect, it's actually a defect that you want to have if you like coffee. You actually detox it quite well, and it can really help stimulate a parasympathetic reaction. That's why we do coffee enemas as well. Phase three, just really looking at more deeply. What can you eat on a low-carb, ketogenic-like diet? Well, again, you're basically eliminating carbohydrates. So you don't know what a carbohydrate is. You're going to have to educate yourself a little bit. This would be a good slide to look at over and over again, and maybe even screenshot it and pause the video. There's tons of information on the internet about this, so don't worry about that. 
But looking at eating more meat, uh, more low carb foods, and at the bottom with this red on the bottom, you're not eating any of that stuff. So it's really getting your glucose levels down. Here's a really nice picture that I pulled off the internet about what you'd have for breakfast. Maybe a green drink, maybe some eggs, maybe meat for breakfast, maybe an omelet, and maybe an avocado. And then you can see some different choices. Goodness sakes, this is a very hearty way to eat. Now, if you're addicted to sweets, you're not going to like this diet, at least for the few first few weeks, because you're really cutting them out. So on all your diets, this is just my recommendation. On all your diets, if you're going on a ketogenic-like diet, it might be a good idea for your spouse and your family to go on a very similar diet. So you're not tempted by, if they're eating junk food and cookies and cakes and stuff, and you're on a ketogenic diet, it can be very miserable. But if there's nothing of that in your house, and this is what you're eating, this can be very fulfilling, very hearty, very warm. Um, it's very it's really comfort food. So ketogenic diet's an easy one to do, really. This is a this is that low carb diet. So if your genes point to that and I say we're going on a ketogenic like diet, this is what you're going on. All right. I hope this helps and uh, stick to it. Remember, feel free to search the internet for other things on a ketogenic diet and more things on our website about it too. Thanks so much.